have that specific language in it. Okay. Um, C.W. Anderson, talk about Twitter. It's been shut down, we know about this, and Facebook with the Internet going down. But talk about the origins of Twitter. Sure. I mean, there's been a lot of debate, I think, in the media about whether what we're seeing in the Middle East and elsewhere is sort of a Twitter revolution. Um, and I don't think anyone would seriously call it that. You know, people make revolutions, not technology. But when you learn about the early days of Twitter, um, you can see why a service like Twitter would be useful um, for people trying to coordinate decentralized large protest actions. Um, some of the people involved in the very early days of um, developing Twitter as a company um, were actually involved way back in 2004. I'm sure you remember the Republican National Convention protests in New York and the DNC protests in Boston. Um, some of the people involved in the very early days of Twitter were very instrumental in helping set up um, SMS uh, texting systems that uh, allowed protesters to communicate with other protesters and also the media um, and organize sort of spontaneous decentralized actions in New York and in Boston. So some of those people, it was called Text Mob. Um, and Jeremy Scahill, um, working for your show, has written uh, written about the text mob service back uh, in 2004. So some of those folks doing that, hacking that technology, um, you know, in New York in 2004, ended up um, demonstrating technologies like that to the folks starting Twitter. Um, and it's not to say that, that radical activists created Twitter, but they certainly brought the ideas, the ideas of sort of these decentralized communications to the folks who are setting up this larger company. Um, right now, Twitter, of course, is down, and yet the people going out in the streets. I mean, we now have reports of millions of people in Egypt out in the streets. So, as you said, it, ultimately, it's not the technology, it's the people. Well, you know, technologies don't cause anything, um, but they help people do certain things more easily. Um, so, yeah. I, I was also very interested in President Obama saying uh, we support freedom of press, freedom of assembly, and freedom of the Internet. Yet, Tim Carr, the last time we were reporting on your organization, Free Press, it was about the FCC, the chair, Janikowski, not following through, President Obama not following through on a free and open Internet. Right. The pledges that President Obama made uh, while he was a candidate in the early, in the early uh, year, first year of his administration to protect net neutrality weren't, weren't fulfilled by his chairman at the FCC, Julius Janikowski, who in December uh, passed what he called the net neutrality order, but which doesn't fully protect wireless networks, doesn't fully protect free speech on the Internet as we know it. So that's serious. We have some serious concerns about Internet freedom here in the United States as well. Interestingly, uh, China um, has blocked keyword searches for the word Egypt, yeah. CW. Yeah. I mean, you know, Again, it's this double-edged sword, right? Technology doesn't create revolutions, it doesn't create social protest, and it can be used to squelch social protest. But at the same time, it can, you know, sort of help these movements, help dissident groups coalesce and then act. Um, if technology didn't help us do that, then why would governments be trying to shut it down? Google has launched a special service to That's allow right. people in Egypt to send Twitter messages by dialing a phone number and leaving a voicemail as Internet access remains cut off in the country. Yeah, and in fact, that that idea of sort of text-to-voice talk uh, was pioneered back in, during the Republican convention in 2004. So you see that these these hacks, these technological hacks, have a long history. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us, C.W. Anderson, Assistant Professor of Communications at City University of New York, and thank you to Tim Carr, Campaign Director of Free Press. They're having a big meeting uh, around media democracy in Boston in April. That does it for the show. Democracy Now! Produced.